Hi and welcome to Newsfeed, I'm Kamal Lee and here's a look at some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world. Hey, he's, he's stopping his breathing right there, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. Okay, he's talking. The killing of George Floyd. Social media burns with anger at another unnecessary killing of a black person by American police. Why did this mother die at an Indian railway station in front of her young child? We'll have the story. People over the age of 65 are more likely to share fake news. Science backs what you may already know. And we'll tell you why this good boy became a record breaker. Well, top of our newsfeed, George Floyd. American police killed an unarmed black person this week. And it's a situation that happens in the United States with tragic and disgraceful regularity. There have been an outburst of anger on social media at this killing, but how many hashtags and memes and discussions about the killing of black people will there be until American police change the way they operate? New videos have emerged of the arrest and police handling of George Floyd. The footage appears to show the first contact between Floyd and the officers. Initially, police said they were responding to reports of forgery and that Floyd had resisted arrest. But the videos show no indication of resistance. There's water or something. Please. Please. Ah, I can't breathe, officer. Floyd died shortly after this was taken, an officer digging his knee into the 46-year-old's neck. Hey, you, you stopping his breathing right there, bro. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thousands of protesters have gathered at the intersection where Floyd took his last breath. Officers in right gear have used tear gas on the crowds. And many have taken to social media to express their frustration. officers to be charged with murder because that's exactly what they did. They murdered my brother. He's a jump giant. He don't hurt anybody. He give his last to anybody. They didn't care. They treated him worse than they treated animals. And I was like that. They took a life now they deserve life. I don't feel sorry for them. The mayor of Minneapolis has also called for further action. Why is the man who killed George Floyd not in jail? If you had done it, or I had done it, we would be behind bars right now. And I cannot come up with a good answer to that question. Floyd's death recalls the 2014 police killing of New Yorker Eric Garner who was detained for illegally selling cigarettes. Ghana's death sparked the Black Lives Matter movement, which highlighted police brutality against unarmed African-American men, often for alleged non-violent offenses. It's 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 How long y'all gotta it's hold it's him it's down? It's but what has changed since then? And when will the hashtags and campaigns lead the US police force to change its behavior? Well, next, Arbina Khatun. She's a young mother who died at a railway station in India. And what happened when the video was released on social media is that we were presented with a very real example of the income inequality in the world's biggest democracy. A child tries to wake his mother at a railway station in eastern India. Arbina Khatun's family says she died moments before of extreme heat, hunger and dehydration. 
She and her son were waiting for a train for poor workers, trying to get out of big cities. A four-year-old child reportedly died at the station the same day. The Hindustan Times reports the cause of death was from dehydration and heat. India's strict coronavirus lockdown has left millions of people jobless. Many daily wage earners have been left with little money and food. So the government has organised trains to transport migrant workers to their homes in rural India. The country is dealing with extreme temperatures for the second year in a row. Temperatures have risen to 50 degrees Celsius. Critics say there have been shortages of food and water on the train journeys. Indian Railways denies the accusation and tweeted pictures to show food and water parcels on trains. Local police say Khartoum died from an illness, and Indian Railways says she was unwell before she came to the station. Whatever her cause of death, this video is a reminder of the hardship faced by India's poorest workers. All right, let's keep moving around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Thursday. There is more anger among some in Hong Kong after a law criminalizing insulting the Chinese national anthem was passed. People in Hong Kong do sometimes insult the anthem at football matches and in other settings. The law comes in as another law is being passed in China which makes political protest and secessionism illegal on Hong Kong Island. Exactly the activities which have been happening there for the past year. It's no surprise that these two laws have passed at the same time. Hong Kong officially becomes part of China in 2047. Dominic Cummings has been in the news for the past few days because he broke UK lockdown rules. He is the Prime Minister of Britain's top advisor. His name has not been a top trend on Twitter because that site's anti-pornography algorithm stopped him. Australia's national sheep flock is at its lowest ever level. The sheep have been dying or sold because of an unprecedented drought there. The new stats, which show there are 66 million sheep left in Australia, do not take into account the recent bushfires and the effects of the pandemic. Well, speaking of Australia and sheep, there is growing beef between the land down under and China. Brit explains why. China and Australia are locked in a war of words and some fear the major trading partners are heading on a collision course. The relationship hit a new low after Australia led calls for an investigation into the origins of the coronavirus. Hu Xijian, editor of the state-run Global Times, referred to Australia as a bit like chewing gum stuck on the sole of China's shoes. Sometimes you have to find a stone to rub it off. Then the rhetoric turned into trade threats. The Chinese ambassador to Australia called for a boycott of Australian products and universities. And the Chinese government announced it would ban some major Australian meat exporters and impose hefty tariffs on Australian barley imports. It's been an ongoing issue uh, between our two countries and, and we have seen uh, the level of trade of barley into China fall from 1.7 billion down to 600 million. So I think it's, uh, it's, it, it would be, um, I think we have to be careful not to draw lines between these two things. Um, we would expect and hope that uh, this issue will be determined on its merits. The reality is there's plenty at stake for both sides who are economically bound. China makes up about 30% of Australia's trade revenue, and China sources its iron ore from down under. But its ability to navigate its trading interests is being put to the ultimate test by its allegiance to longtime security ally Washington. Australia looks like the meat between an increasingly hostile sandwich. US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has this warning for Australia over its potential Belt and Road deal with China. We will simply disconnect, we will simply separate. While one Chinese state media report said, Once Australia is regarded as a supporter of the US in a new Cold War, China-Australia economic ties will inevitably suffer a fatal blow. Australia and the US have shown a united front against China on a number of issues, including Chinese military expansion in the South China Sea, the exclusion of tech giant Huawei from its 5G networks, and condemnation of alleged human rights abuses. 
China sees Australia's front-running of the coronavirus probe as another example of its ideological prejudice in favour of the US and claims the inquiry is being engineered by Washington. But anti-Chinese sentiment in Australia has been brewing for some time, even manifesting in racist attacks on campus. Australia claims that Beijing is meddling in its domestic affairs through political donations and influencing universities. Then there's the curious case of Wang Li Chung, who told Australian media he had been operating as a spy for Beijing. The alleged defector offered up a trove of information to Australian intelligence officials detailing how Beijing covertly controls listed companies to fund intelligence operations, including the surveillance and profiling of dissidents. Chinese police said the so-called spy was a convicted con artist from Fujian. But with the rhetoric intensifying, the question now is whether they can regain that trust before a full-scale trade war breaks out. All right, let's take a look at some COVID-19 related stories that you may have missed. Ford Motor Company say they are releasing a software update for the cop cars they make in America, which will allow the temperature in them to be set to 133 degrees Fahrenheit. They say that's high enough to kill 99% of COVID, which may be in the car. It works by warming the engine to an elevated level and turns the car's climate control fans to high and hot. Pretty cool. Or hot. Uh, whatever. A container ship lost some of its containers in a storm off Sydney, leaving to stuff washing up on a beach. Some of the containers held surgical masks, allowing for this person to take a picture of herself holding them while she said she was cleaning the beach. Well, if you are over the age of 65, you are more likely to share fake news. And that's not me saying that, that is science. And while these boomers don't necessarily believe all the nonsense they're spreading around, they are sharing it more than younger people. As they're navigating social media and see news shared by people in their network, older adults might assume they can trust it because they have a short list of people they follow and they have close relationships with people, whereas we might come to our timeline more skeptical. They might think something was shared by someone in their trusted network, when in fact it wasn't. And the last thing we are going to show you today has been making me chuckle since I saw it earlier. Take a look at this. Ladies and gentlemen and dear children, meet Finley Malloy, the six-year-old golden retriever from Canada, who is now a world record holder for being a big mouth. He can hold six, count them six, tennis balls in his mouth at one time. Impressive. Now, when he was doing this just for fun, his humans would take pictures and then they had the bright idea, hey, I bet no other dog in the world is so strangely talented as our Finley. And you know what? They were right. And the Guinness World Record people agree and have given Finley the title of dog who can hold the most tennis balls in his mouth at one time. Congratulations, Finley, my boy. Good doggy. And that is all from the Newsfeed team. Do stay at home if you can and stay safe. If you want to get in touch, you'll find me at Kamali Melbourne on Twitter. If you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for being with us. I'll see you again tomorrow.